This is CBS News Bay Area with Juliet Goodrich. Good evening. On any given day, there are more than 4,000 people living on the streets or in their cars in San Francisco. The city is trying to fight for its right to clear those encampments, an issue that's now set to be taken up by the nation's highest court. And tonight, Kenny Choi gives us a personal look at who the Supreme Court's decision could directly impact. Kurt Schruptrin has been living in a car on the outskirts of an industrial part of Hunter's Point. The city of San Francisco is clearing an encampment of trailers and cars for the second time in a month. I'm yeah. still human, you know? Mm -hmm. Still human, I still have rights. I, I don't do people wrong. Hmm. You know, I don't deserve to be treated like a, like a child or a piece of sh you know. He lived in Richmond for eight years until he couldn't afford a rent hike. The veteran says he looked for shelter in San Francisco, but was then told it wasn't available when he tried to check in. He also says his cash was stolen when he finally accepted temporary shelter in a congregate setting. I haven't had nothing but bad experiences with their their tries. Shoptreen refuses now when city workers approach him. So does Thomas Welch. They've offered shelters. I'm not interested in a shelter. Nearby businesses on Finch Street have been complaining of worsening conditions to the city for more than a year. It's very stressful. Our employees don't want to come at night anymore. They don't want to work on the weekends because uh, we don't feel safe. We can't control everybody that rolls through and, and all that, but you know, for those of, there are some of us who do try. City officials say a court-ordered injunction barring anti-camping ordinances and mostly upheld recently by the Ninth Circuit Court of Appeals has made addressing homelessness more difficult. They basically punted uh, an ultimate decision, and from our perspective, um, that has not been helpful because we are dealing with the complexity of these issues on the streets every day. Under the injunction, city workers can clear encampments, but the homeless are allowed to come right back as soon as the streets are clean. City Attorney of San Francisco David Chu believes a favorable U.S. Supreme Court ruling could make a difference. What would change on the streets? I think it would have made it easier for us to continue to be offering services and shelter and to individuals who reject those offers to be able to say to them, you're going to need to move on or else we are going to be enforcing laws against you. Like, like citations and, and arrests? Exactly. Homeless advocates say the city is shifting blame for their own policy failures by pointing the finger at lawsuits and the homeless. Could be that... You know, the Supreme Court says that you can punish people for being who they are. You can punish them for being homeless. You can punish them for being mentally ill um, and so forth and uh, put them in jail. And um, we hope that's not the case. Jennifer Friedenbach is the executive director of the nonprofit Coalition on Homelessness. Recently released city data shows a 22 percent increase in people connected to shelter or housing over the last year. When we force the city to be more thoughtful, to think about the needs of homeless people instead of just moving them from block to block, we saw more people getting out of those encampments and into shelter or housing. People like Thomas Welch and Kurt Shruptreen are simply living day to day. I'm not out here because I want to be out here. As the legal challenges about the constitutionality of criminalizing homelessness escalate through the courts. I don't know, maybe we might come right back here. Who knows, you know, because that's what happened last time. It's a revolving door. Both sides are hoping to slow down. A ruling from the U.S. Supreme Court on whether homeless sweeps are legal is expected by the end of June. Today, the city requested to pause another ongoing case over the injunction until then to avoid wasting public funds on legal fees. All right, let's get to a bombshell announcement today. In another high-profile case, the Los Angeles Innocence Project announced today they're taking up the Scott Peterson case. The Innocence Project works to exonerate wrongfully convicted prisoners, but has not elaborated on what it was about his case that led them to taking it. CBS News legal analyst Jessica Levinson says the things the Innocence Project has already requested from the court gives us an idea of the approach they'll be taking. The Innocence Project has said that they are looking at actual innocence in this case, and they're asking for additional information. They're asking for evidence from the original trial and the evidence would indicate that they think somebody else potentially perpetrated this crime. They're also asking for additional DNA testing, a type of testing that might not have been available at the time. And so really what they're saying is we want other evidence to see if we can rule Scott Peterson out and point the finger at somebody else. 
All right, so Peterson's attorney released a statement today after the Innocence Project's announcement saying they are very excited to have the incredibly talented attorneys from the L.A. Innocence Project lend their considerable expertise to helping prove Scott's innocence. So the Innocent Project's announcement comes more than two decades after Peterson was first accused of killing his wife, Lacey, and their unborn child before throwing them in the San Francisco Bay. He was sentenced to death in 2005. Then in 2020, the California Supreme Court reversed the death sentence because of questions over juror behavior. He was then resentenced to life without parole. All right, on to Oakland now. All four suspects in the killing of Officer Tuan Lei pleaded not guilty in court today. And our cameras were not allowed to take the video. So these are images from inside the courtroom. Marquis Cooper, Mark Sanders, and Alan Brown have all been charged with murder. The fourth man, Sabron Ray Russell, is charged with second-degree burglary for his role in this incident. Officer Lei was killed last month while responding to a break-in at a cannabis business. All right, let's get to our weather now. We are in first alert weather mode because of several rounds of rain heading our way. So the first stretch is going to arrive tomorrow afternoon. So be prepared for a wet evening commute. So for more on what is in store, let's get right to first alert meteorologist Paul Hagen. Yeah, Jules, I think the heaviest and most widespread rain with this first round is going to arrive right at the peak of rush hour Friday afternoon and evening. And this is just the beginning of a parade of storm systems. Look at our day by day and night by night rain chances as we head through the weekend and even into early next week, just towards the top of the scale. That doesn't mean it's going to rain everywhere all the time, but these waves of rain are going to continue to fall on increasingly wet soils. So let's take a look at the forecast rainfall amounts over the next seven days. So adding up all these different waves of rainfall and in some of the rain shadowed spots, we're anticipating about an inch and a half of rain in the Santa Clara Valley, a little over two inches for Los Gatos. But the boom and bust that we're putting underneath San Jose and a few other communities indicates the range of possibilities. If we miss out on the moisture, San Jose might get less than an inch hit the jackpot might pick up double the amount that we are expecting again the amounts in the circles that is the most likely scenario but there's always that range of possibilities within the scope of what's going to be happening over the next several days. Concord anticipating just over two inches of rain, but it's possible that close to four inches would add up. San Francisco, we expect about three inches of rain overall, but the boom amount gets higher and higher the farther north you go. The anticipated amounts get higher the farther north you go. Three to five inches of rain on a widespread basis for the North Bay. And look at Santa Rosa. That's a startling number there on the high end of the spectrum. And even on the low end, if you really miss out on the waves of heaviest rain, you're still going to pick up three and a half inches of rain over the next seven days. And and if things really overachieve, close to nine inches of rain would be possible. Of course, just the first wave of rain is going to be moving in tomorrow. Hour by hour, rain chances really ramp up during the afternoon with the peak of the rain chances right around the peak of rush hour. We'll track all of it with Futurecast coming up in just a few minutes. All right. Thank you, Paul. The A's moving to Sacramento, at least temporarily, seems to be back on the table. Team owner John Fisher's black SUV was seen leaving Sutter Health Park today. Our sister station reports that he and other team executives toured the ballpark where the minor league Sacramento Rivercats play. So why exactly were they there? Well, as we know, the A's are leaving Oakland for Las Vegas, but their lease at the Coliseum runs out at the end of this year, and they will need a temporary home until their new stadium is built. Sacramento has been one of the cities floated. The A's are also reportedly set to tour another minor league stadium in Salt Lake City this week. Excitement is growing, and the countdown is on, and the 49ers are gearing up to take on their longtime rival, the Green Bay Packers. So we caught up with one dedicated fan today at Levi's Stadium, stocking up on some Niners gear. 49ers are also gearing up for the playoffs. And our Vern Glenn joins us now for the Red and Gold Report. Tenth postseason meeting between these two teams. Yeah. Most in the NFL history. Mm -hmm. So they, here they come again. 49ers, here we go. It's the countdown to Saturday night. One day, 21 hours, 52 minutes before they tee it up with those Packers. At stake, a spot in the conference championship game. Now, Green Bay arrives tomorrow. Niners have had the rest nearly three weeks since they played a game of consequence. George Kittle is one of the players that set out the regular season finale against the Rams. With that time off, he's been keeping up with his oldest fan, his 101-year-old grandmother, Lucky. She celebrated her 100th birthday at Levi Stadium last season. 
Now, Lucky won't be making the trip to Santa Clara this weekend, but she will be watching closely back in Iowa. She was in Arizona for a game against the Cardinals. I don't know. I don't think she's coming to this game. Who knows, you know, if the Niners faithful want her back, we'll figure out something. She always shoots me a text. She's like, hey, good job. She watches every game. So just the fact that um, you know, I have a 101-year-old 100, grandma who still watches everything that I do, it's, it's pretty special. Whoa, 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 whoa. And Texas. Uh, and Texas. You can text at 101? She just stopped driving like a year ago. So <laughs> things you can do in small town Iowa, guys. <laughs> it's a little bit different than here. Whoa, yeah. Grandma Lucky. Wow, way to go. I mean, there's some longevity in that Kittle family. There is. I like knowing that he's got Grandma watching. He's going to be you know, out there even more so, don't you think? Yeah, well, let's give Grandma another game to watch Grandma after Lucky. Saturday. All right, thank you, Vern. So, more 49ers for you. Our Matt Lively, he pulled together a group of Niners super fans to talk about what the team needs to do to beat the Green Bay Packers and whether the bye week will help or hurt. I think it helped them. You know, they're all professionals. They do this for a living. You know, this is what they live for 24 seven. Like we go to our eight to five jobs. They do this 24 seven and it's in them and it's what they get paid for. Cause they're doing the same practice. They're practicing, they're studying and they're professionals. I have a feeling Joe from Oakley knows what he's talking about. So you can catch more on the red and gold fan club coming up tonight at 7:30. Throw. That's a parabola. That is math. So you, we can graph this out. We can figure out the, the velocity of it. The angle needs to be thrown. That's all math. That's why they need me. They don't know that yet. So they have the math teacher there. That's 60%. We can do some quick math. We do all this. They have a 110% chance of making it to the Super Bowl. There you have it. Mr. Orozco's prediction. Thanks for watching. We'll see you at 11 o'clock. Red and gold right after this.